In this problem, it tells us the fifth term of a geometric sequence is 64 and the tenth term is 2. We need to find the common ratio, the first term and the fifteenth term of the sequence. So you may notice that it is much easier to solve for an unknown when we only have one thing that's unknown, whether it's the first term or the common ratio or n or the nth term, right? But we have all three things missing, the nth term, the first term, and the common ratio. But we are given two terms, and so we can use these two terms to solve first for the common ratio. So here's how we can do that. First, I'm going to record that my fifth term is 64, and the 10th term is two. So what I can do <clears throat> is use this equation that we know that we use for geometric sequences. And I am first going to solve for the first term, but in terms of the common ratio. So in terms of the variable r, here's what I mean by that. I am going to use this fifth term, 64, and rewrite it into my equation with the values that I do know. So I know that 64 equals the first term, which we don't know, times the common ratio, which is also unknown, to the n minus 1 power. Well, I know that n is 5 because I'm working with the fifth term. So 5 minus 1. Now, I have two variables here, so I won't be able to solve for the numerical value of the first term, but I am going to solve for the first term in terms of r. So let's do that. In order to do that, I know that 5 minus 1 is really 4, so I have r to the fourth power here. So I'm going to divide both sides by r to the fourth power and solve algebraically just like I normally would with only one variable. So the first term is 64 divided by r to the fourth. Now it's okay that I have my variable r here because what we're going to do is we can use the second term that we were given and instead of writing u1 or the first term, I am going to substitute this value 64 over r to the fourth for the first term, which will give us only one variable, which is r, the common ratio, so we can solve for the common ratio. So if I use this term 10, which is 2, I know that 2 is equal to the first term. Now I'm going to substitute the value that I just found using my other term. And I can multiply that by r to the n minus 1 power. So in this case, 10 minus 1, which I know is 9. So this is great because even though I have two, I have like terms, right? So I can combine them. So let's see what that looks like. Well, I know that r to the ninth power is same thing as being over 1. So now I can just multiply these two fractions like I would with any other fraction. So if I simplified this, it would be 2 equals 64 r to the ninth power over r to the fourth power. Now, when I'm working with two bases that are the same, when I have like terms, I can subtract the exponents when we're dividing one by the other. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, which means that I'm left with r to the fifth power. So now I know that 2 is equal to 64 times r to the fifth power. And I can continue to solve for r like I would any other variable using the algebraic rules that I know. So this means that r to the fifth power is equal to 1 32nd, right? If I simplify 2 64ths. So in order to find r, I'm going to take the fifth root of both sides of the equation, which tells me that r equals 1 half. So now I know that the common ratio of this geometric sequence is 1 half. Now, we found in the first problem that r equals 1 half. So now I can use this common ratio and use my equation for geometric sequences and a term that I've been given to find the first term. So let me go ahead and do that. I can use either term that we are given. I'm going to go ahead and use the fifth term. So I'm going to say that 64 is equal to the first term, which we don't know, right? We're solving for that times the common ratio, which we found to be 1 half, 
to the n minus 1. Well, the fifth term is 64, so n must be 5. So, 5 minus 1 is 4, so I have 1 half to the fourth power. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for the first term, which means I can divide both sides of my equation by 1 half to the fourth. And I find that the first term is 1,024. So I can record up here that my first term equals 1,024. To find the 15th term of the sequence, I'm going to use the data that I've already found, the fact that the common ratio is 1 half and the first term is 1024, and I can simply substitute these values into my equation. So I am looking for the 15th term, and it's equal to 1024 times 1 half to the n minus 1 power. n is 15 because we're looking for the 15th term minus 1. So once I solve this 1 half to the 14th power, I have 1024 times 1 half to the 14th power, and I find that my 15th term is equal to